Hey everyone, Mr. E here with another hands-on robotic tutorial video. And in this one, we're talking about my brand new MBOT2 robot from MakeBlock. So forever ago, I bought the MBOT1, and this is actually the original MBOT1, which was a super simple, super affordable, and very versatile small little robot that you actually built using real nuts and bolts, not just snap together plastic. And I was really impressed at how easy it was to not only put this robot together, but to also program it in both a block-based and text-based programming language, and how simple the MBOT was. And you can still buy this MBOT robot, although now there's a little plastic cover and they've redesigned the chassis just slightly since this original one that I bought many, many years ago. But the MBOT 2 is a more advanced and more capable complex version. And in this video, we're gonna see what it takes to get started with the MBOT 2, including assembly, connecting it to your device, and programming it to drive and operate autonomously. So let's dive in. You can purchase the MBOT2 on Amazon or at other STEM product retailers, or you can buy it directly from MakeBlock, and the link for the MBOT2 and some of the other things we'll be looking at later on can be found in the video description below. At the time of making this video, you can find the MBOT2 for $149.99 US, which is twice as much as the simpler MBOT robot, which costs about $75 at the time of making this video. And for educators with tight budgets, I also recommend that you check out the MakeBlocks grant guide to see if there are funding opportunities available to support you and your students. And you'll also see that there's a lot of different accessories available, which we'll look at some of later in this video. And again, you can find some of the links for these great accessories in the video description down below. But once you've received your MBOT2, it's time for unboxing. It's important to note that assembly is required. So as we unbox our robot, we'll see a lot of parts and things, including a CyberPi, which comes with the MBOT2 and is a pretty awesome little gadget on its own. The CyberPi is MakeBlock's microcontroller, kind of like a Raspberry Pi or a Microbit or Arduino. And you can do a lot of really cool coding projects with this from apps or game design or even electronic circuitry. And later, we're going to look at how the CyberPi connects to the MBOT2 and acts as sort of a controller where we can select and choose our programs to run on our MBOT2 robot. You can find a digital version of the assembly guide as well as a lot of official tutorials on the MakeBlock site, but I was surprised and pleased to see a printed instruction guide included with your MBOT2 robot as well. Building the MBOT2 is actually pretty simple, even though it does use metal hardware and screws, rather than plastic snap together pieces like you might find with the Lego or Vex robot, which are also suitable for the age range that MakeBlock is publishing. Technically, the MBOT2 is recommended for ages six and up, and perhaps this is doable for a child with some prior experience or with some parental guidance when it comes to fastening the small parts and things together. But personally, I would suggest ages 10 or 12 or so for more of an unsupervised building experience. However, when it comes to the coding, as you'll see later, the age range is much wider than the building portion of this robot, in my opinion. But building is pretty easy, and it could take as little as 10 minutes or so. The parts are all really well made with threaded screw holes and easy alignment using the guide that's provided. And one of the handiest things that I found in the printed manual is a one-to-one -one scale model of the screws drawn in the instruction guide, which lets you measure and ensure that you have the right component for the step that you're on. I also found the MBOT2 to be easier to build and more robust and of higher quality electronic components than the simpler and cheaper MBOT robot. One example of this is that the motors and the motor encoders are really nice, offering a lot of speed and performance while also allowing for more precise movement control, like going a specific distance as you control your robot, not just some basic time commands. And you also receive an upgraded RGB color sensor to detect lines and colors on the ground and an upgraded ultrasonic sensor to detect objects in front of the robot too. And actually the only part that I found challenging with the build were the wiring connectors. MakeBlock uses pretty standard connectors, but in some places it's facing up or down, so you constantly feel like you're plugging things in backwards. Additionally, the instructions didn't really show any visuals for cable management, which I think was a missed opportunity. The other thing that the instructions didn't mention clearly was how to charge your MBOT. There's a large three volt power connector on one side, which is what I assumed was used. However, the only cable that's provided was a USB-A to USB-C cable. And at first glance, there isn't even a USB-C port on the MBOT2 robot. 
But this is all done through the CyberPy, which pops onto the top of the MBOT2 controller board. After attaching the CyberPy, we can use the USB-C port on the CyberPy to upload our code to the MBOT2 or to recharge the MBOT2, which takes about three to four hours to charge fully, though mine was actually almost fully charged when I received it. So I was able to start programming and start creating things through this video immediately, no charging required. With the MBOT2 built, we can test its functionality using some of the example programs that are preloaded on the CyberPy. After powering on the MBOT2 using the switch on the side, we can navigate the program window on the CyberPy to find the MBOT2 examples. The CyberPy acts like a controller or some type of computer that actually lets us store and select the programs that we've uploaded to it. There are a couple different examples for the MBOT2 robot, as well as examples for the CyberPy that you can try out. And within your MBOT2 kit, you'll find a line tracing mat that comes with your robot, which you can tape onto the ground. This will let you use the example programs like the line tracing program to see if the line tracing, the RGB line tracing sensor works. And there's also other programs to test navigation and obstacle avoidance with your robot too. So once you've tested your robot and everything works as it should, and if it doesn't, head back to the manual to try things out, we can now move into writing our own programs for our robot. And I actually think programming the MBOT2 and honestly any make block robot is one of its strongest features because it's all done through a really intuitive and versatile programming environment called MBlock. You can run MBlock on a Windows, Mac, or web-based device like a Chromebook, and there's even an Android and iPad app available too. These apps are all also 100% free with no subscriptions or in-app purchases necessary. And while you can make a free account or sign in with a Google or Apple account, I also like that you can use them without needing an account and save your programs onto your device too. So you'll notice that there's an mBlock app for block programming and another one for Python programming. And it's important to note that you can actually program in a block-based language or a Python-based language in the blocks programming app, but you can't program in a block-based language when you're using the Python-based app. Additionally, the Python programmer appears to be more intended for the CyberPy than any of MakeBlock's robots, so I would suggest the Block Programmer app for all users when working with the MBOT2. After launching the MBlock Block Editor, we can see that this is a very intuitive interface and one that's similar to other block programming apps that you may have used before that you can find on my channel like Scratch or Snap or MakeCode. In the bottom, we want to start by selecting the device that we're programming, and the CyberPy is listed as the default. To program the MBOT2, we can either add the MBOT2 extensions to the CyberPy device, which will let us control motors and things, or remove the CyberPy device and instead add the MBOT2 as a device, which includes all the necessary extensions and blocks ready to go. This is what I would personally suggest. You'll also notice that there are a lot of devices that can be programmed using MakeBlock from the, all the different MakeBlock robots, but also other microcontrollers like Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, and even other robots like older Lego Mindstorms and more. And I think that's pretty cool. So if you're working with another system like an Arduino or something like that, the coding skills that you've gained from that system or for your MBOT are transferable from device to device. But once we've selected the MBOT2, we need to connect to our robot to allow us to upload our code once we write it. This can be done through a few different ways. First, you can connect via USB using the USB port on the CyberPy. But to do this, another app called MLink is needed, which acts like a USB driver on your device. You can also connect via Bluetooth, which I found to work really well. But of course, this is only possible if your device has Bluetooth enabled. And in the classroom, where you have a bunch of MBOT2 robots, students would see every MBOT2 in the room when attempting to connect to theirs. Lastly, you can also connect via Wi-Fi, which is pretty handy when you're working on this at home. But to do this, you first need to connect to your robot via USB or Bluetooth and place the MBOT2 on your Wi-Fi network. But once we've connected, we can start to program. You will see that you can drag and drop block-based code from the different block categories out onto the programming window and snap the blocks together to write your code. You can also switch to the Python editor and code in Python here. But when you do something in blocks or Python, it doesn't transfer back and forth. So if you write something in blocks and open the Python editor, you won't see that code in Python. And if you write something in Python and go to blocks, you won't see that code in blocks. However, there is a Python previewer if you're trying to learn how to do something in Python. So if you write something in blocks and you open up the Python preview, you'll see that your block-based code was converted to Python. And while this can't be edited here, you can copy and paste this auto-generated Python code into the Python editor. You'll also see that there's block categories for the CyberPy. 
to change its screen, make it light up, play sounds, etc. And then there's block categories for the MBOT2, including motor and sensor control. And then there's more generic categories like operations and events that impact every type of device in between. To write your MBOT2 programs, you will often combine CyberPy commands with generic commands with MBOT2 commands for your code. For example, starting the MBOT2 operation when pressing a button on the CyberPy. One tip is to use the print command for the CyberPy to display instructions on the screen on what you should do or even what program is running once you selected it. So that way you know what you're doing on the MBOT2 rather than just having a blank black screen on the CyberPy. We need to choose events to run our programs and you can grab an event that starts when the CyberPy starts to share the instructions, then start the rest of your code for another event like pressing a button on the CyberPy. What I'm describing here is an event which you need to run any of your program. If you drag a block of code out, it won't do anything unless an event triggers it. Like in Scratch, you'll see that there's a green flag which can be used to start your code or even keys on your computer keyboard that can be used to start your program but only when you're connected in what's called live mode rather than upload mode. The difference between these modes is that when we're connected to our MBOT via live mode, everything we do on our computer, like pressing a key on my computer, will impact the robot, kind of like an instantaneous controller. But in upload mode, you cannot use your computer to run your code, so the green flag event and the keyboard key event are grayed out, and your code won't run until it's actually been uploaded to the MBOT. But once it has been uploaded, it will remain on the CyberPy and MBOT until it's been deleted or overwritten. And of course, after writing your programs, in addition to uploading them to your robot, don't forget to save them on your device, either via an account that you sign in and use the cloud server with an MBOT or saving it locally on your device too. There are a number of example programs to browse through, though it appears all of them are written for blocks with auto-generated Python code rather than dedicated Python examples. There's also a lot of other great learning resources from tutorials to lesson plans and things called make block cases, which are kind of like design challenges or theme projects. And as mentioned earlier, there's also a lot of different add-ons for your MBOT too, like different chassis that you can choose from, like the MBOT Rover or Ultimate Kit or even an AI-driven camera, or my personal favorite, the Smart World Add-on Pack, which lets you build a few different things to add on to your MBOT too, like this robotic arm, which I look at in another one of my videos. All right, so that's all there is to it. So as you see, to get the MBOT2 up and running, it's pretty straightforward with a little assembly needed and then connecting it to a wide range of devices through either a downloaded app or a web-based version to get this programmed in either a block-based or text-based language, which is pretty fantastic. I'm really impressed with the MBOT2. I can see that it's way more precise than the MBOT1 with more fine detail motor control and more precise sensors, as well as more capable programming flexibility with the CyberPy as well. Well, so it's definitely a robot that I would recommend for not only at home if you want to get into robotics, but also for the classroom environment too. Now, in my next robotic tutorial, we look at the Smart World add on, which lets us build a variety of different add ons for our MBOT2 robot. So, definitely check that out on my channel. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching.